nothing can stop me, I'm all the way How's it going guys, Public Safety Network here. So today we're going to talk about uh, the armored truck industry. I've noticed a huge influx of subscribers from Reddit, and I've noticed a lot in the Reddit forum that I'm a part of that people are asking a lot of questions about the armored truck industry, you know, how to get into it, what to expect, and that's kind of what this video is going to be about. Now, I've made other videos about armored trucks in the past, like intros and kind of misconceptions and myths about the industry, but today is going to kind of just be, we're going to talk about the kind of day-to-day -day operations for an armored truck company. We're not going to go any, into anything like super secret or something, you know, that's kind of like taboo to talk about. I mean, this is all pretty standard stuff that, I mean, most people could quickly Google. Um, however, most armored truck companies are broken down in kind of like two sections. You're going to have the driver messenger side, which are these are the guys that drive the trucks, make the deliveries, pick up the deliveries, that side, which more out in the road. And then you're going to kind of have vault operations, which are the guys that handle all of the stuff that needs to get done at the branch, whether it's checking in routes, whether it's, you know, processing change orders, whether it's getting the routes ready for the next day, that kind of falls on vault operations. And so obviously both jobs have a lot of tasks to them. And so we're going to kind of break this up into two parts. I'm going to do the video today, which is going to be about the driver messenger side. And then the next video is going to be about the vault personnel side. So for, for the purpose of this video, we are just going to talk about the driver messenger side and kind of what a normal day is when you're an armored truck guard. Also for the purpose of this video, we kind of talk, we use the term driver and messenger. However, there is also a term called hopper, which a lot of people in the industry will use to describe the messenger. So if you hear me using them interchangeably, messenger and hopper, they're the exact same thing. So let's kind of get started and then we're going to kind of talk about what to expect on your average day as an armored truck guard. Now most, I think the earliest route we had started at about 4 a.m. Uh, the two guards there would usually open up with the supervisor and they would be the first route to go out that day. And uh, at that point we had routes kind of staggered, uh, usually either every hour for the beginning earlier routes and then a lot of times maybe every 15 to 30 minutes after that until I think our last route went out about like 8.30, give or take. Um, so... Uh, I think the earliest route I ever did was about 5 a.m. But the reason we stagger routes is because if you've ever been inside a kind of garage that houses armor trucks, they're very large and very bulky, and it is very, very difficult to be able to get them out. And so if we have everybody trying to leave at the same time, it's going to cause a lot of congestion issues and make it very difficult for anybody to get out. And so that's actually why we stagger the times. But to kind of get into what your day-to-day -day is going to look like, is you're going to show up for your route. There's usually, on average, two men do a route. I've heard of there being three. We didn't really have that unless under special circumstances. And I've heard that some places have one, which is incredibly stupid and dangerous. And I would never work for a company that only allowed one guy to go out on route. When I worked for my branch, it was pretty much two guys per route minimum. And it was usually two. But anyway, back to the, back to the subject on hand. You're going to come in for your route. You're going to usually meet up with your partner. Uh, one of you is going to be the leader of the route. This person is generally called the crew leader or the team leader or first man or, or whatever you want to call it. And they're the ones who are going to be in charge of the route. They're the one to make sure that the route is staying on track. And honestly, these guys a lot of times have been the, the crew leaders for a while. And so they know their route, route like the back of their hand. And they actually have it mapped out usually perfectly the way to get it done most efficiently. So you guys are going to meet up. Now, the driver's job which is usually going to be the person who is not the crew leader, is going to go check the truck. And what that means is they are going to sweep tr the truck to make sure that there is nothing left behind from the previous day. Now, obviously, the guard the previous day should have done it, but you always want to check your truck to make sure that you didn't leave, that there's no money left behind, that there's no, you know, nothing of really utter importance that got left behind in that truck. And so you sweep the truck, and then after that, you are going to pretty much... Uh, just pretty much do a walk around the truck. You're going to make sure that, you know, you don't have any flat tires, that there's no excessive damage. And then you're going to check under the hood, check the fluids, make sure you have, you know, radiator fluid, make sure you have coolant, make sure you have, you know, transmission fluid, oil, whatever you need in order to make sure that the truck is going to be operational for that day. 
Now I can tell you guys this, most companies have very old trucks and so these trucks break down constantly. But it's still important that you check the basics because when, if something happens and you, they go back and look and you see that you didn't check it, then well, there's gonna be a lot of, the questions are gonna fall on you more than anything else. So that's what the driver is going to be doing. The driver is going to be kind of checking the truck to make sure that it's good for operations that day. The messenger or hopper, what they're going to do is they're going to go and check out the route. So they're going to go check their change orders. They're going to go check to make sure that the coin is right. And that's kind of the process that they go through. Because they're, because they're the leader and they're responsible for the route, they're the ones who have to make sure that all of that is there. They have to make sure that they have all the change orders they need. They have to make sure that they have all the coin that they need. Because once you've kind of left and checked everything out, it's a very lengthy process to have to drive all the way back to grab something if you forget it. So that's why everything there is needs to be made sure that it's there the first time. And so while you're kind of both doing your separate jobs, you know, trucks are leaving, they're starting the routes. So after that, um, the the messenger is going to come out and he's going to kind of uh, meet up with you and you guys are going to start loading the truck. So um, I'm not going to kind of give away where things are positioned in the truck because that would kind of make it, but pretty much, you're pretty much, your hopper and you are going to kind of decide where best things to place the change orders, where to best place the coin and how to set up kind of, kind of the bins and stuff, or where you're going to throw your pickups for the day. So that's kind of going to be decided between you because every, every team kind of has their own way of doing things, how, how they want to run things more efficiently. And so you kind of, that's going to be dependent a lot of times on who you're working with is how you're going to run things. So after you've done all that, you're going to kind of head out. You're going to go out and you're going to do your pickups and deliveries. I would say on average, I did about 50 to 70 stops a day. I've actually had upwards of 90 stops in a day. But for me, the average was between 50 and 70. A lot of times it's depending on uh, the day of the week and then a lot of times what area you're covering. If you're covering a more rural area, you're going to have a lot less stops. If you're covering obviously a more a dense area, more metropolitan area, then you're going to have a lot more stops. But then a lot of times the stops are more close together. So... You're going to go through your whole route, you know, from beginning to end. And this is kind of what we tell people when they get into the armored truck industry is you need to be kind of worried that you're not going to have a set schedule. Uh, you're pretty much, you get to go home when you're done. So if you get done super early and I've done that where I've clocked in at, you know, 7.30 a.m. And my route was done by 3 o'clock and I was probably clocked out by about 4, 4.30. So that happens. There's other days where I've clocked in at 5 a.m. and I have not clocked out until 8.30. So you need to be aware of that when you join this, that the hours vary, very, the hours vary greatly depending on obviously the size of your route and the distance that you have to cover. So at the end of that, you've you know collected all of your you know your change orders, you've made all your deliveries, you've made any other stops that you have to make. A lot of times you may stop for lunch at some point um, to grab some food and eat it on the truck. And then what you're going to do is you're going to head back to the base of operations. Now. When you get back to the base of operations, there's most places have a procedure on how you enter and how you exit the building. Again, I'm not going to go into great detail about how this is done, but pretty much it's you have to be let in by somebody that's already in the building. It's pretty much the way things work. I'm not going to give you the exact procedure on how that stuff works. If you guys really want to know, there is a brief clip on YouTube called in was the secret life of money armor trucks and it kind of briefly shows that part so i'm not going to really go into great detail about that but yeah there's certain procedure on how you get your truck in and then so once you get your truck in you're going to park it in one of the available spots so once you've kind of parked your truck in most guys will back in their trucks you're going to start unloading it um i can tell you this but the way we separated all of our pickups that day was based on bank uh, most customers that we have use a certain bank, whether it's Wells Fargo, B of A, Chase, whatever, and we would separate them based on whatever bank they used because this made things easier because when we talk about vaults kind of operations tomorrow, then that part about separating the, the deliveries, I mean the pickups by their bank is going to make a lot more sense. So what you do is you kind of take all the bins, they, uh, you, you should have loaded them, we have these big clearing bags that we do. And what we do is you just take all of the, uh, you take all of the pickups and you throw them in clearing bags, obviously based on bank. We have some banks that are obviously more widely used, so we may have multiple bags for the same bank, and there's other ones we may only have like one really small bag. And so you unload them, throw them onto. Usually we have like these push carts, throw them on there, and we have 
uh, these little rooms that are sealed off by uh, rolling doors that you're going to check in your route. And so this is where uh, most of the time the driver is the one checking in the route. The crew leader almost never checks in the route unless they really want to. And then one of the vault personnel, and this is where you're going to kind of go through all your pickups. So the way that our pickups work is that we have a digital scanner. It's almost like UPS where we can scan, we scan the location we're at. We scan our own badge to say that we're the one who picked it up. And then we scan each individual piece into the computer system. And we also have a handwritten log of it as well. So when we get back to the base of operations, uh, we're going to pull up using our employee ID number and the vault employee and it's going to pull up pretty much all the pieces that we picked up on route and pretty much what we're going to sit there and do is we're going to scan every piece one at a time to pretty much balance it out so by the end of when you've gone through all your bags you should be at zero every piece should be checked in the issue comes in is when you're missing a piece and you have to figure out where it went but that pretty much is the the pretty much the checking in the route part where you're pretty much just sitting there scanning every individual piece into a clearing bag tying up the clearing bag and then throwing it into a bin to be taken to the bank later that later that evening. After that, it's pretty much you're kind of done at that point. Uh, you need to make sure that there's nothing else left for you to do. And at that point, as the driver or the hopper, whoever checked in the route, at that point, you can kind of collect your things and you can kind of head home for the day. That's pretty much the day in a nutshell. Uh, things obviously vary by day of the week. Weekends are a lot slower, um, a lot shorter routes. Um... And so, I mean, it's it's kind of, again, it's also a branch thing, guys, or even a company. But, I mean, most armor truck companies run very similarly. Uh, they may do things here or there differently. But for a lot of times, the, the practices of the company are pretty standard across the board. Um, so that's about all I have for you today, guys. Uh, like I said, if you have any other questions that I didn't touch up on the video, you can go ahead and throw them in the comment section below. Or, you know, if you've worked in the armor truck industry kind of throw it down below in the comment section maybe i said something and you maybe did something differently and i'd actually like to hear about maybe what you did differently uh than what i did but you know thanks for watching guys i've actually seen quite a bit of growth in the last even just week alone and so i'm trying to get to that 100 subscriber mark because at that point it's another milestone for me on youtube where i can get a little few more perks from it so if you guys are watching and you haven't subscribed go ahead and give it a like definitely subscribe so i can make more content and then expect to see the vault video coming out in probably the next week or so but again thanks for watching guys i really appreciate all the support and like i said and if you're working right now or you're working tonight stay safe and have a good day guys